I work at Poznan University of Technology. Uh, and during this presentation, I would like to share our experience with neural networks in mobile robotics. So here is our robot, and we are mainly interested in enhancing the perception of mobile robots. And uh, here is the robot 4.0. This is a robot which we use in our project. This is the mobile platform, so our robot can navigate in the environment. We've got some arms, but the most important part are sensors. So we've got a lot of RGBD cameras. Here we've got the Kinect, another Kinect here on the wrist. On the top we've got laser scanners, another laser scanners are here. So plenty of RGBD sensors, a lot of data, and we use them to navigate or make the, the robot intelligent. Uh, so mainly we work uh, on topics like uh, mapping, so we want to represent the environment and use, the, and use this model efficiently to plan the motion of the robot or to grasp object, objects. We also work on localization of robots in this environment. And I would like to say that this is the uh, work of the whole group. Uh, so here are the people involved in this project. In this project. And we've got actually two projects. The first one is uh, the leader project. Uh, and the second one is the uh, EU project uh, where we have a quadruple robot working in a mine. Um, those people are also here, and if you want to know something more about the methods which I present here, you can meet them during a poster sessions, so we can come and you can ask about details. And I will give you four examples, how we use deep neural networks in uh, mobile robotics. And then the first method is uh, image generation using uh, neural networks. The second is how we use neural networks in navigation. The third method is uh, detection and uh, estimation of articulation, articulated objects, like doors, for example. And finally, the last example, foothold selection for legged robots. And the first method. So we generate images. And why we do this? Uh, in robotics, when you try to grasp the object and when you try to navigate, uh, you need the full model of the object or the, or the environment. Then your algorithm performs better. But in practice, when you observe, the, when the robot observes the environment, it can see the frontal, front face of the, of the object, like here. And when you apply some grasping algorithms, very often they fail, because they, the, the robot does not know the whole model of the, of the object. Uh, so to perform better, we need the whole model, model of the robot and to grasp properly uh, the objects. And this is the example scenario. So we have a robot, we've got the RGBD camera, we observe the objects from a single perspective, and this is the camera, camera view, and we know that this is the, the Mac, we can use uh, object, we can classify the image, and we know that this is the Mac, uh, but we cannot create the full model of this object, because it's impossible to move the hand to the right. Uh, it's also time consuming to move the, mm, the, the arm behind the object uh, and create the full uh, model. So we want to use deep neural networks to generate the images from various, various viewpoints. And this is the, the goal of our method. So on, on the input, we've got the, the image, RGB image only, and we use uh, neural network to generate a, a set of RGB images and set of uh, depth images from various viewpoints. So from the initial perspective, we cannot see the handle, but when we virtually rotate the camera, we can see the handle on the images. And we do this all the time. We want the robot to have the same capabilities. We humans. So this is our uh, architecture. On the input, we've got RGB image and the mask of the, of the object. On the output, we, we've got uh, RGB and the depth image. And we can provide the reference position of the camera. So we want to hallucinate uh, the view of the objects. Mm -hmm. And here are some uh, results. So this is the input image. And I have to em emphasize, this is the only input to the, to the image and the reference angle. And for each reference angle, we've got the output images. 
And here are the images generated by our neural network. And here we can see the reference RGB images. So they're quite accurate. And the same for depth images. So this is for the Mac, and this is for the guitar. And here is the image. This is the only one input image. And for this image, we can, uh, we can provide uh, the reference angle for the camera, and we can virtually, or uh, we, yeah, we can rotate the object and generate images for this object. And so example for the car, or various cars, for the, for the guitar, for the Mac, and we've got 12 categories of objects in this case, but I'm not going to show all of them. Here you can see some problems. So this is data generated by our neural network. We missed some information about the details, but still we are happy about the results. Oh, this is also the failure case. Uh, so this is the reference image, uh, and this is the output from our net network. So we can see that some data, data details are missed on the, on the output. And this is the problem with the data set. We don't have enough objects in the data set to generalize for this type of objects. And the funny thing, we can mix some models. So for example, we can take the image of the beard houses and we can try to generate cars. So if we, we take this one, so this is the output, look, look, looks like a bus, and if we take this uh, bridge house on the input of the network, we generate cars. We have something like this. Uh, like a, it looks like an off-road car. And the same for lamps used to generate uh, guitars. And from mugs, we can generate uh, bottles. And some example results on real data. Um, it looks slightly worse, and it works slightly worse on real data but still we can reconstruct the object from single viewpoint. So this is the only one viewpoint which we use to reconstruct the object. Okay, so the next topic uh, is navigation. So this is our robot, we've got the arm, and, but we also have the mobile base and we can uh, move freely in the environment. So this is the map. This is actually navigation stack in ROS. So with this method, we can, you can localize the robot with respect to known map. You can set the reference position. Uh, so the robot autonomously goes to the goal position. It avoids obstacles. It can go back and move auto the, robot, the robot can move autonomously in the environment. But the problem is that we spend a lot of time tuning the parameters for these models. Mm. So we want to use neural networks uh, and train them to navigate the robot in the environment. So in this scenario, uh, we teleoperate the robot, and we use the data collected from these uh, examples, from this uh, presentation, from this tutorial, uh, to train the, the neural network which controls the robot. Uh, and actually, we can take the state-of-the-art state method, but this method is uh, used to react only. So if the robot sees the obstacles on the right, it turns to the left. If it, if, can see, if it can see the obstacle on the left, it rotates to the right. And the problem is with dead ends. So if it can see obstacle on the right and on the left, it don't know what to do. The robot does not know what to do and goes to the, to the wall. So we had some problems here, like here. And we solve this problem by using two network, neural networks and adding new information on the input, or more information on the input. So actually, on this neural network, we use depth image from the camera. We use the history of previous orders, or previous commands, uh, which were sent to the robot, or produced by, <coughs> by our system. And uh, we use also the goal position. So we provide the goal position, because we, we can also use it to navigate the robot to the goal uh, position. And we've got the navigation network, um, and we've got uh, obstacle avo avoidance network. Um, and here is the result. So in this case, the robot smoothly goes to the corridor, and it knows that it's, it is impossible to go forward, 
and it goes back smoothly. Mm -hmm. And with this neural network, we can also set the goal position on the map. So here is the initial position of the robot. Uh, we can set the goal position, and the robot goes autonomously uh, to the goal position and avoids uh, the obstacles. And we didn't have to tune the parameters, we just collected the data from the robot, which was, tele which was tele teleoperated by the human. And it works. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, third example. Uh, what you saw before uh, about navigation uh, is very common in robotics, but in this case, all objects in the environment are obstacles. So it does not matter if we see, the robots can see the human, doors, walls, everything is an obstacle, and we should avoid obstacles. But in practice, we've got some objects like doors, uh, so we can open the door, the robot can open the door, it can go out the room. Uh, so the robot should be able to detect the, those kind of obstacles and should know how to interact with them. So the goal of this research is to detect some articulated objects like doors, for example, uh, and then estimate the parameters of the joint. So the position of the joint, the type of the joint, if it's hinge, position, hinge joint or translational, um, and estimate the configuration and also uh, the object, the, the state of the object which is articulated. So here is how we do this. Again, we use RGBD data, so Kinect, Asus Xion, or Intel RealSense. Uh, we take the pair of RGBD images. Uh, we provide some... Uh, actually, we compute the differential images, and we provide them to the input of the neural network. So here, here you can see the example. And using on this image, we try to estimate or detect, actually detect, uh, articulated object, and we use single-shot detector. So well-known neural network from... Actually, it's implemented in TensorFlow Object Detection API. And then we use some traditional methods to estimate the state of the joint and find the object which is articulated. So we, uh, we use the segmentation to detect the object or to find the object. Then we optimize uh, the reprojection error to find the parameters of the joint. And we, this is the goal, this is the result. So here we can see some example detections in natural environment. So we've got some sliding doors, uh, some drawers, and also some doors, hinged doors. And here is the result. So here is the axis of rotation, uh, the segmented object, and with this, we know that uh, this object can rotate, and we know the limits of the rotation. Mm -hmm. so this is the point cloud, so everything is visualized on the point cloud. Some drawers. And neural network, in this case, provide us really strong prior knowledge about the, about the joint. So we classify also joints, so we know that this is hinge joint, uh, drawer, or something else. Mm -hmm. And the last example uh, is about foothold selection, so completely different robot. We've got four legs, and this robot is designed to work uh, on rough terrain especially on, in mines. Uh, so if the robot walks on rough terrain, it should carefully uh, detect footholds to avoid edges, for example, and avoid falling down. Um, so the standard controller provides us the, um, the reference position, position for the foot if we go in the given direction. So this is the reference position. And then we take the map, which is around this... Uh, we take the elevation map, which is around this nominal position. And in this area, we are trying to find the best foothold for the, ro for the robot. And we can solve it using traditional methods, but we do this sequen sequentially. So we evaluate the, the shape of the terrain, then we check the collisions, 
and also we check the workspace of the of the leg because we don't want to, the robot to collide uh, with, the, with, with, the, with the environment and also with the other parts of the robot. And this is slow. In our method, uh, we trained the neural network and we can do this at once, everything. We, we can select the best footholds and we can check constraints. This is extremely fast and actually with this method, the robot knows uh, its own properties. So it becomes more intelligence. Mm -hmm. So actually, this is the input to the neural network. So the patch around the nominal foothold. Here is the output from the neural network. So we provide the cost map for, for the input map. This is the elevation map. This is the output from the neural network. And we select the best position for the foot. And we do this continuously when the robot walks on rough terrain. And here we can see the movie with the method. Mm. So it's again the same. We've got the local elevation map. OK, this, this is important. We collected, to train the robot, to train the neural network, we collected the data in the simulation. Because it's difficult to do this in, on the real robot, we, we need a lot of data. It's time consuming, and we can also destroy the robot. So we collected the data in the simulator, and then we trained the neural network. So for each input elevation map, we were able to, or we are able to compute the cost map, and then we use it online on the real robot. So you, we can use it on the rough terrain. This is in simulation in gazebo. Example decisions made by the robot, and the same in gazebo but on stairs. Actually, without this method, it's impossible to climb those stairs. The robot always falls down. And you can see the, the cost, it avoids the edges on the steps. And the experiment on the real robot. It walks rather slowly, but it carefully selects footholds in this case. Here we've got a 2D laser scanner, so we can build the elevation map of the environment, of the terrain actually, because we use only the map of the terrain, and then we select footholds. So the robot safely can overcome those obstacles. And as I said, with neural network, the robot is aware of its own limitations. And the robot knows the shape of the, of the workspace for the leg, uh, can detect collisions implicitly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, we can quickly go to the summar summary. Um, actually, I had 20 minutes to describe you a few examples of the application, uh, how we ap apply neural networks in mobile robotics. Uh, so I would just want to say that application of neural networks is easier than using traditional methods. Uh, we don't like tuning parameters, maybe we, because we are lazy. It's easier to train the neural network in and collect the data using simulator or just provide the demonstration by human. So this is our ni nice feature of neural networks. But it's not always true, of course. Application of neural, because if you have optimal solution for motion planning, like I-STAR, there is no need to apply neural network, it's obvious. Uh, very often, neural networks are more efficient, um, like, uh, for example, for this uh, animal robot, for the quadruped robot, where in a few milliseconds, we can evaluate collisions, the workspace, and we can select the best uh, foothold. Mm -hmm. And we can give the new capabilities to the robot with neural networks. So, for example, we can try to reconstruct the, the parts of the objects which are, which are occluded by, by the object itself. Yeah. So, before I thank you, uh, uh, here is the contact information. So, you can find the web page of our projects, those two. Here is the web page of our lab. Here is my personal web page and my email. 
And I think this concludes my presentation. Thank you.